I mean, you spend a, a lot of time, important time, going out into the world as an advocate for, for truth. And we all know what that means in sort of everyday scales, but if we can be a little bit more expansive in our thinking here, um, does this disjuncture between the truth at the level of fundamental physics and the truth at the level of intuition, excuse me for that spittle that just went halfway across the stage, um, does, does that dis distinction give you any pause? Well, we came into this by talking about um, if, if, if Martians had a different kind of... Yeah. I mean, to what extent is our conception of logic and truth governed by, the, 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 by what's necessary in order to survive on this planet? And if for some reason you need a different kind of logic to survive in Mars or, or Alpha Centauri or somewhere, would we have a different conception of truth? Um, I, it's a dangerous time to be talking about this with fake truth and post-truth. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think of myself as a, as a naive realist. I mean, I, I think there is such a thing as truth. Um, but quantum weirdness does worry me. And, and, but um, I, I'd like to think that although um, our view of the world is no doubt shaped by the need to survive in, as I said, in, in, in Africa, hunting buffaloes and things. Um, I think I want to say there is such a thing as objective truth. I mean, I, 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 I hate the idea that which we hear from some academic circles that, I don't know, truth is a social construct and, yeah. that, and that, that there's no... Well, well I, I, obviously I would agree that when it comes to the fact of the matter about the electron's um, magnetic dipole moment, Right, that's a number that quantum mechanics predicts. We go out and measure it. They agree, digit by digit by digit, nine, ten digits down the road, and that does feel like it qualifies as truth in in some way, or or close, extremely close approximation of truth. But when we go to sort of higher levels, I guess I feel worried about scientists going out into the world. And and, and you're right, it's a very curious time because, you know, we're meant to be out there proclaiming the facts about the world and the facts about the matter and the truth of the world. But with my experience in realms that are so different from the truth that we normally talk about in everyday life, it gives me some pause. Mm -hmm. um, can you make me feel better about that a little bit? No, because I, I, I live in a, in a more naive... I mean, I live in, in, a, in a, sim, a simpler world. And um, uh, ob objective truth is, su is something that, that, that we all live, live within our everyday lives. And, that, and that's, the, that's the world in which we evolved. And, and so I, I, I don't have that difficulty. I'm just kind of aware. I mean, I have difficulty not just in the quantum field. In, I mean, there are other parts of physics which upset me as well. Um, well, well, in, in cosmology... I'm happy to help if I can. Cosmology, for example. Um, yes. I, um, uh, I, I, I read that the Big Bang, it, that, that at the moment of the, of the Big Bang, everything was compressed, not just into a small volume, but into an infinitely small volume. Like, I, I mean, that worries me. I, got, I, got, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I can, I, I'm, I'm aware that a solid object like a table or a rock is mostly empty space, but nevertheless, yeah. if you were to compress it and get rid of all the space between nuclei, yeah. it would not just be the size of a proton. I mean, it would, be, it would still be a fairly substantial chunk yeah, In fact, of you can stuff. calculate. I want to do a small calculation that if you were to um, take every person that's ever lived yes. on planet Earth and remove the space between the electron and the nucleus and yeah. all of their yeah. atoms, then the remaining particles without yeah. that space would fit inside of a baseball. But a baseball is a pretty big pretty thing. Big thing. No, that's my point. I, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with I you. I mean, it, that, that, that is an astonishing calculation, by the way. Um, yeah. I mean, that, 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 it, it really is. Um, is that really right? It's really right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I have the baseball right here to prove it. No, um, uh, yeah. Uh, but, but, okay. but, uh, but actually, I'm agreeing with you. I'm, I'm, yes. Uh, you know, yes. And, and, and so we have exactly the same worry that 
um, our equations, Einstein's general theory of relativity, are, are the equations that we use here. Those equations actually break down at time zero. Time zero is when everything would be crushed to yes. this infinitesimally small size, and the equations themselves break down, which means that we don't really know what's happening at time zero, which is why, for instance, we've developed ideas that have tried to go beyond Einstein's equations really to answer that very question. That question can be viewed as the motivation for a theory like string theory, or other attempts to put quantum mechanics and gravity together to try to resolve that puzzle. We've not yet resolved it yet, but I will say one thing that is often misunderstood. So today, we don't know whether the universe is um, finite or infinite, right? In, in fact, Einstein once family said there are only two things that might be infinite, space and human stupidity. Yes. And he said he wasn't sure about space, you know. <laughs> uh, and, 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 there, and we're still not sure about space. But if space does go on infinitely far, then as you go further and further back, yes, it, it shrinks. But, you know, if you take infinity and you divide it by two, what do you get? Infinity. Take infinity and divide it by 10, what do you get? Infinity. Mm -hmm. So things in the universe get closer and closer together, but the grand expanse of reality at time zero at the Big Bang would not be infinitesimal. It would be infinitely big, but it would have infinite density. So the idea of a little tiny dot from which the entire, not the observable universe, but the entire universe yeah. emerges, that's, that could well be the wrong picture. Well, but I don't know why you make it so difficult for yourself, because you... Um, well, in, in, in the following sense, um, uh, uh, Hubble's law, and you, and you, you, you reverse the process in it. Yes, I mean, yes. I can see, you know, you cr crunch it down to something a bit bigger than a baseball. Yeah. Why go to something infinitely small? Good, good. You, you, could, you could imagine running the film in reverse, the cosmic film yeah. in reverse, and you simply stop it a couple frames before time zero. You say, Let, you know, let's just stop it right here, and we'll go forward in our explanations yeah. from that starting point. Um, we're really goddamn ambitious as physicists, right? We want to go, oh, you know, we really want to go to time zero. We really, you know, and so it will feel to us as though we have left out the essential quality of cosmology. If we have to sort of by hand say, oh, stop the film, we don't no, know what's going on, and go further no, but from what, there. But why when you get to time zero, does it have to be infinite? It's more, why, why shouldn't it be it may not, good. the, the, it, the it, size it, of, a, of a cannonball? Or, I mean, a, a, if our mathematics told us that, then indeed... Oh, it, so the, the mathematics yeah, tells yeah, so, you... So maybe I didn't say it clearly before, but in Einstein's general theory of relativity, when you metaphorically wind yeah. the cosmic film further and further back, imagine the universe is finite in size, so we don't yeah. have to worry about okay, the infinity, yeah, yeah. then indeed it goes right down to zero size. The radius of the universe goes right down to zero. And if somehow you could correct Einstein's equations, which we hope maybe string theory will do, so that with the correction, when you wind the film back to zero, the universe does not have zero size, but it's a little tiny nugget, like a, a baseball or mm. you know, some smaller entity, then that would be a very satisfying cosmology to start from that, yes. from that point forward. But the mathematics forward. doesn't let you. 